Are hammers Turing complete? That's today's question, and before we get to the answer, we first need to define a bit of terminology. First of all, what is a hammer? Okay, if you don't know the answer to this, clearly something has gone horribly, horribly wrong with the nation's education system. But that's fine, I'm here to help you on your apparent voyage of discovery, or whatever. A hammer is a tool consisting of a weighted head fixed to a handle that is swung to deliver an impact to an object. You'd use it to push nails into 2x4s, and hammers tend to be the tool of choice for amateur breakers and enterers worldwide. This is probably the easy part, the difficult bit is now. What is Turing completeness? Well, to be Turing complete means to be able to replicate the performance of a Turing machine, which is a helpful definition. What might be more useful is to describe what a Turing machine does, and then we can talk about whether a hammer might also be able to do its job with a minimum of modifications by us. So a Turing machine is basically a system that can manipulate symbols on a strip of tape according to a table of rules. The machine has a few components. The first is a theoretically infinite line of tape containing an equally theoretically infinite line of cells, each containing a bit of data or a symbol or whatever, I don't know. Another is the head which moves along the line of tape and reads what's on whichever cell it happens to land on. Finally is a table of rules that governs what the machine should do depending on what it finds. So if it lands on a cell that has a yellow square, and the table of rules says if you land on a yellow square, go forward three, the machine would go, okay, no worries, I can count to three, and go one, two, three, four. Anyway, important point is this. The machine needs to be able to do a few things in order to qualify as being Turing complete. It needs to be able to read a given piece of data in a given cell of a theoretically infinite computer system. It needs to be able to write those cells, and it needs to be able to take actions depending on if a cell contains some piece of data or another. In computing, this last bit is known as conditional branching, better known as if-else statements. You know, if one thing do this, else do something else, right? It's like when you wake up in the morning. If I have an atom of self-esteem left and I get up, else I go to sleep. Very common phenomenon. Happens to me all the time, please contact a medical professional, this is a cry for help. With all that in mind, can a hammer be Turing complete? The answer may shock you. No. Okay, fine, yes, but, but only sort of. I'm gonna praise you by saying that I'm not a computing expert. I do not have a qualification in computing. I did one computing module in the first year of my degree a module that is not relevant to what I'm talking about. If you want a proper introduction to computer science, may I recommend Tom Scott's The Basic series, which explains all of this sort of thing far better than I possibly could. With that disclaimer out of the way, here's Wonderwall. I mean, let's go to the lab, which I have. It's actually my desk. I'm tired. What I've constructed here is a rudimentary two-bit computer system. Uh, we have two uh, bits of memory, uh, two bits floating around in the system, a one and a zero. Using the hammer, we can move bits into memory, like so, so 1 and 0. We can take bits out of memory and read them, so I can see that now says 1, so I can make decisions based on based on that. We can also swap them, so we can, re we can read what's in A and write it to B and vice versa. Uh, very, very important point in computing is being able to take an item that's in one address and move it to another. And because of all those things, we can actually write some rudimentary computer code. Now, I don't know if you can see this in the in the thing. It might be a case of, um, I need to annotate it down here or something, but that'll be fine. So read A. Okay, so reading A, it says zero. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We move that up. There we go. Move A to B. Okay, so we need to swap A and B. I need to swap, I need to, I need to swap A, I need to swap A and B. And then if B equals zero, uh, we use this custom script that I imported, which is slam, so we go, and then we loop from three, so then we go back to that, and then if B, if B is zero, we slam again, but there's no can. I didn't think that through. The script would actually probably crash at this point, because there's nothing, I can't slam anything anymore, because I already did that, that bit. I didn't think of that.